Do you remember your audition for Rent? I read somewhere that you don't identify as gay. We thought he had food poisoning. We thought he had like maybe a little bit of a flu. When I think of a musical that truly changed my life, Rent is the first one to come to mind. I know every word of every song and always idolize Anthony Rapp, who plays the title character of Mark in the original cast, as well as in the major motion picture. So when I was in New York, I knew I needed to sit down with him in none other than Alphabet City. And trust me, he did not disappoint. I'm so happy to have you here. Well, thank you. You are such an icon, and I just remember being 16 years old and being obsessed with you and Mark and Rent and the fact that we're in the East Village right now with you. It's just one of those moments. Yeah, this is we're actually in a place that's half a block away from where I was living at the time that I first did Rent. It would be a surreal moment to me to see you just walking down the streets of the Alphabet City. I get recognized sometimes, but I don't notice it any particularly in any particular way in the East Village per se. It certainly happened at the time when I was doing the show. I would probably get recognized a lot on the subway back then too. Do you still take the subway? I do take the subway sometimes, yeah. I also ride the city bike a lot. We're in the Life Cafe on the corner of 10th Street and Avenue B. To days of inspiration playing, hooking, making something I the need to express to communicate. When you first moved to New York, how long after that did you book rent? So I moved here in the fall of 1989. I booked rent five years later. Were you living your life at that point as like an out man? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, from, from 1992 or three when I came up publicly, like, but it was in a very small way. I was in an off-Broadway show and I thanked my then partner in my bio. I read somewhere that you don't identify as gay. Well, I like, I've always liked the word queer. There's a couple things I like about it. I like that it's umbrella and this is again before we were really talking as much about the spectrum of sexual orientation the spectrum of gender gender identity expression but to me that captures everyone and i do like the fact that queer uh the etymology or the usage comes from strange or different mm -hmm. and i think i'd like that to reclaim that word i do think that on my spectrum it's probably like 70 30. you date women though as well or? i mean i have it's been not for a long time i've been in exclusive relationships. I read your book. And I remember a lot about your mom in the book and at first she wasn't okay with it, right? She was a nurse and she was very aware of what was happening with HIV and AIDS and she was really worried about that. And she was worried about the general hardships. She wasn't homophobic in the sense of like there's something wrong with you or it's a sin or you know it was more like worried that it was going to make my life harder. I even feel like that for my parents, like my generation, they were just concerned about like, is your life going to be harder, getting a job, doing this, doing that, you know? And nowadays, I don't feel like it is, but I back then it, it was. And I think it depends very much on where you live. There's still, I mean, I think the kids in Texas right now are probably True. in Florida and Idaho and South Dakota, you know, or other rural areas, small towns. I think that there's still going to be some hardship for a lot of these kids. We're dying in Your career, I feel like, really hasn't been dictated by your sexuality. Like, I feel like, is, is Mark gay? I don't think Mark's gay, no. You no. don't ever talk about that, right? No, I mean, Mark, Mark for sure had a thing with Maureen. I mean, that's for sure. True. Jonathan Larson, who wrote Rent, was cishet, straight mm -hmm. man, um, who, HIV negative, who was very uh, committed to shining a light on the, the, the trials and tribulations of the queer community and the HIV AIDS community. I think that there's a lot of Jonathan and Mark, and so I, I've always thought that Mark was probably straight, but maybe he's a little queer too. I mean, I, you know, it didn't, it's not in the text at all. And uh, I, I suppose you could make any kind of reading you want, but he for sure had a relationship with Maureen and pines after her still. So. Yes, Tango Maureen. Yes. The Tango Maureen. Do you remember your audition for Rent? Very well, yeah. My friend Bill Henry had died of a heart attack. Oh my God. His memorial service in Midtown and I left that theater to come downtown to uh, audition. Wow. So, yeah, I was a little late because I was leaving the morning service. So interesting when people in their career have these highs in their career and then at the same time, personally, they're going through like a hard, the hardest time in their life. And I know that is a situation for you with Ren. Yes. You have this peak in your career, this thing that you're forever going to be known for, but at the same time dealing with Jonathan and your mom. Yes. While Rent opened and Anthony was experiencing this high in his career, he was simultaneously having to cope with the fact that his mother was dying of cancer. A year later, in 1996, she unfortunately passed. It was the most intense period of my life, but it was also incredibly vivid. It was very, um, it felt like super 
present and alive, sometimes very overwhelmed, sometimes very exhausted, but also like everything was so vivid and tactile and uh, intense. Those parts of my life are etched profoundly in there. I learned a tremendous amount about what I'm capable of, I suppose. I felt fortunate that I had the conduit of rent to help move through that time and live, process it and exp express it. She was well enough to come to the opening night oh my gosh. in 1996, but she was declining, but she was well enough to come, which so was she, great. So she saw it? She saw it. That oh. is so special. Yes, that was one of the greatest nights of my life. I mean, it's probably still the greatest night of my life. I mean, it's the most um, intense, yeah. And the way that the lights were in the Nederlander Theater. When you're in a show, a lot of times, if there's a lot of front light, you can't see into the audience, but the way that our show was lit, there was a lot of side light and down light, so we could see very deep into the audience. So she was in the front row of the mezzanine, and I could look up to her the whole show and see her. I have gels. Oh my gosh. So you could just see her watching you. And there's so much direct address. There's so much, you know, there's so many times where we're singing directly to the audience, where Mark is talking to directly to the audience, and so I was always able to check in with her. And then it makes me think about how you said that she was just kind of nervous about, you know, you making it and being being successful as a gay man. And it's like she's watching you be a star on a Broadway show that like will forever impact the world. Yeah, I was very, very glad. It feels like such an understatement. It was profoundly meaningful that she was able to come. Jonathan Larson, the writer of Rent, was 35 years old when he finally got his break with Rent. You know I idolize him a lot. His endless perseverance and belief in himself, working tirelessly at the cafe while writing musical after musical, never giving up and always knowing that his chance will come and his voice will eventually be heard. Finally, he created Rent, the musical that changed the game for him. And in the morning of the first off-Broadway preview of Rent, he died of a brain aneurysm. How did you find out that news? Well, we had the dress rehearsal and it was an incredible night. It was electric. There was a huge standing ovation. It was packed. It was, it was very, very exciting. And Jonathan was there that night. He hadn't been feeling well, but he was well enough to be there. So after the show, just said goodnight to him. See you tomorrow. Um, and he went home that night. In the middle of the night, uh, he had tea on the stove and he collapsed in his kitchen and died from an aneurysm. So the next morning we were going to come back to the theater for notes and I woke up, checked my message to see if there was anything about rehearsal or anything like that. And there was a message from the artistic director and he said, please call me. And I was like, Did someone get fired? And before I could call him back, my agent, Sarah, called me and she was the one who told me that he had died. And uh, it was... Um, it was in, it felt insane it felt it felt like 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 are you kidding like not a joke but like break from reality like what are you what are you talking about i mean the timing of it all cuz you know he hadn't been feeling well but he'd got he but he had, like had food poisoning it seemed we thought he had food poisoning we thought he had like maybe a little bit of a flu it was really really a bananas day and then we all gathered together at the theater and just trying to figure out what, what we were going to do. For a while, we just sort of just sat together and like talked quietly and kind of every once in a while would cry or, you know, not knowing what to do. And then, and then at some point during that day, Michael Greif, our director, had been talking to the artistic director, Jim Nicola, and, and decided and talked to Jonathan's family and decided that what we would do instead of having the preview, we would do a sing through of the show just to have the theater still be filled with his piece that he wrote um, but like before an divided audience including his parents who were flying in from Albuquerque it was a really incredible night you must remember that night like so vividly that's another one of those that's like carved into my brain at what point did you realize that Rent had the power that it has and that it was forever going to change the landscape of musical theater? I can't say that it, I knew it was going to change the landscape of musical theater, but I knew that it was incredible from the first day of rehearsal when we sang Seasons of Love, when we learned Seasons of Love. I knew that that was an extraordinary song. 525,600 minutes, how do you measure a year in the life? None of us expected or predicted it to be like a mainstream hit. At the time, especially in the mid-90s, it was not what musical theater was doing. And that's why it was so special, because it was talking about these issues. It was joining real life into a musical, you know, and talking about issues that were going through in a musical. And I feel like that just wasn't happening at that point. Yeah. And that was Jonathan's huge mission. And 
he really believed in his whole heart and soul that that would he believed that he was going to change the face of music theater it's that confidence you gotta have yeah and and knowing jonathan he wouldn't have said it like in an arrogant way no. it was just like that's what i am you know and he was right he was right he was right i know a lot of actors feel like when they have a monumental role it's like and that's kind of what they're going to be known for forever they feel a certain type of way about it but i feel like you really embrace the fact that Mark is a role that's going to be with you forever, and how do you how do you feel about that? I feel very fortunate. I mean, I've I've been around a long time. I know that it, these things are incredibly rare and special. I should be so lucky. I love that outlook. Thank you. I mean, I I, I don't know any other way to do. I mean, I suppose I understand in a certain sense, maybe some people, but but when they came to you and you know wanted to do the movie, did you sign on right away, or were you like, okay, do I want to redo this, no, or I how? Sign on right away because we none of us thought we would ever do get the chance to do the movie. Oh, it was, it like was no so question. good. It was, it was no so question. Good. If you look through the history of Hollywood adaptations of plays and musicals, maybe you'll have one or two people at most from the original cast. So the fact that they had six of us was everything. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for coming today. I feel like you answered everything, and I cannot wait to put that. Oh my. I'm just like looking at myself as 16 year old being like, wow, Anthony Rabbit's on my show. This is everything. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Appreciate it. Thank you.